Alex said don't have to, but I kind of feel like the bravery would net me some points. You know, we're still early in the movie here, so if I creep off up there, I'm just going to wake the psycho ghost murderer up, and he'll be waiting to jump us when we try to leave. Jesus, Kelly, are they indubitable? Anyway, if we split up, we're just going to get killed off quicker. I tested the first steps up, seeing if I could peer around the dividing wall up into the darkness above. Lex gave me a reproachful look. I guess they weren't into ghost stuff. Oh, crap. I like it. Horror buff, huh? Well, crap. Either I'm the bimbo or I'm the third wheel. I don't know if I like my odds there. At least there's a couple of us with dark fur. And Lex and Kellyo, the indubitable, will be fine until the end because this is their first date. I guess that means Kelly or the Indubitable will survive because Lex certainly isn't the girly one of the two of them. I flushed. Glad we're in the dark. So what do you think? Some psycho businessman who went nuts and murdered the whole office with a box cutter? Or are we talking more like labor who fell into some machine and got all gna gnarly and went on a revenge spree? Ooh, I like the first one, the office killer. And he's still here today, waiting to slice your finger off in the guillotine. Knock it off, guys. You know, the roof up there is actually pretty cool out here. No way, dude. Ah, No. Way. Oh, here we go, jackpot. It seems like the office room for it. Yeah, at least the break room, and then the warehouse. Bingo was right. There was a carpeted room beyond a warehouse manager's office, and past the stained old carpet, it's in moldy little nook that might have been the kitchen at one point, we found our way into a huge concrete room, the warehouse itself. Twinkies! Twinkies everywhere! The warehouse seemed like it was used for packing, judging by the ancient shreds of box and plastic into the in an industrial shrink wrap machine that seemed to be rusted to the floor at the center of a spreading coppery stain. The back wall of the warehouse was burnt partially circled by an ancient roller conveyor for parcels that lead to the target to a large I don't know why I said target large set of shutters my guess was that they did a lot of shipping any industrial equipment here had probably been sold off as scrap with only a few broken metal shelves slumped in a heap near one of the sets of shutters but the majority, bleh, the major score was a seemingly alien object that had been placed in the center of the room by a thrifty adventurer before us. A dusty old soccer ball waiting for us like a sad parsley. Diff well said! <laughs> Abandoning office workers might have piled up the dozen rolling desk chairs in here, or maybe they were wheeled in by the same pioneers who had brought the ball later. But with that, we had our next few hours laid out. I admit it might have been childish, but the next hour in the warehouse was a myriad of games we invented with the rolling chairs through the mostly empty surface. Office chair curling. Uh, that actually sounds pretty fun. With people clinging to the seat, of course, races slaloming around the obstacles and our crowning glory. Office chair to a side soccer. Using the partially deflated old ball. We had set our torches around the perimeter, casting up the high ceiling to light the room with a diffuse glow off of the dull room. Roof. Wow. I didn't... I wasn't done! Side, beside legs as they rolled side to side on the conveyor ro rollers, steering with their boots and legs of the simple machine as we watched guys flailing madly on the chair trying to kick at the psyche ball. No! See, I promised it'd be more fun this time. Yeah, it was fun. I had fun last time, too. But I'm really glad you invited me, Lex. This was actually a really cool idea. I'm glad, dude. I figured you'd get on with everyone well enough. Surreptitiously, I am still on the penalty shootout between Kazi and Taylor. Lex's fingers traced over my knuckles before squeezing my hand with equal partenderness and strength. Yes. I let Lex have hold of my hand whilst they wanted... Spreading my fingers so they could weave theirs with mine against the rungs of the conveyors between us. Dork. You love it. Yeah, kinda. Woo! <laughs> and he wins the Office Chair League Cup. 
Looks like we've got a champ. Before Kazi had much time to celebrate his victory, there came a loud knock on one of the shutters and a gruff voice yelled through. Oi! What's all this then? Turn security, open up, or I'm opening up for ya. Kakova Q. Run. Split up. What? It what? Crap, hide. <laughs> hide? Seriously? <laughs> Kelly or the Indubitable? Uh. I did. Uh. All right, all right. What would I do in this situation? I would panic and run back to the break room. The sound of the lock being popped on the side door chased us as we scattered deeper into the building. Lex and I running in tandem. A torch was quick in our on our heels as we ducked through the break room. Our soccer game quickly burned. Ooh, this is freaking. This is exciting. Ooh, man. Oh, uh, dead. Uh, ah, uh, god dang it. Uh, office area, sure, why not? The sound of the security guard was getting louder. Our torches flashing around made it hard to work out where we were. Think, it's a square corridor, we're on the inside wall. Kazi and Taylor split to the right. Ah, uh, dude, the roof. We gotta get to the roof. I, I, I feel it. We can, we can do our, our animal people parkour down the roof. Uh, it's square room, it's a square corridor. We're on the inside wall. If we go right or left, we're just gonna be in. We're just gonna be going in circles. Uh, Kazi and Taylor, they're gonna be my fall guys. And ah, uh, god dang it! Do I go to the stairs to get to the roof or hide in a room? I don't know. Ah, uh, one of the rooms. Because there's a good chance that they saw where where Taylor and Kazi went, and we can duck in and let them, like, pass us by. We slipped into one of the rooms, then the stairs as heavy boots pounded past after Jade. Legs had their hand over their mouth to muffle their panting as we hid the light of my flashlight diffused through the pocket of my jacket. The room was a crap storm of trash. There was charred flame mark up one wall. That some hilarious interloper before us had driven two bottle caps into to make the shape look like it had eyes. Dude, that's scary. That's like some freaking... That's some Candyman crap right there. You walk through his mouth to get in the room? Jesus, that's freaking nightmare fuel. In the darkness, the man-sized silhouette looked vaguely convincing. After the guard ran past, Lex cracked at the door. Yes, I'm so good at evading police. It was the dark in the hall and the sound of shouting was around the corner uh... I'm going for my my plan to get to the roof rushed up the stairs quickly and as quietly as we could the upstairs corridor was much like the first besides that someone maybe the same vandals from downstairs had dragged two tables out in the corridor to make a makeshift barrier and had spray painted Fort F.U. next to a rusty pipe that had been driven into the wall like a barbaric spear they had used the same spray paint to make it look like the wall was bleeding from the wound. That's pretty gross, but also pretty cool. I'll admit that. Nah. I uh, freaking... No good. Quick, up the stairs again. The roof. I hissed through my teeth as we kept climbing the stairs. Roof was indeed... I've actually ran away from the police before. Uh... Believe it or not, it was nothing big. I was, uh, I had a go kart at one point, and I would drive it everywhere with, uh, with my mother's boyfriend at the time. He actually got it for me, and then he sold it for crack money. But, uh, anyway, we were driving down the road where we lived, just like driving around. We were taking it off like leaf pile jumps and stuff. And then we saw, I was driving, by the way, and we saw a, uh, a police car, like, round the corner as we were going down the road. And, uh, they turned on the lights and, uh, kind of just did the, they didn't turn on the siren fully, they just went that, did that whoop whoop thing, you know, like, they flipped it on, went whoop whoop. 
to let us know that we were being pulled over, basically. And uh, my mother's boyfriend at the time was like, we gotta run away. And I was like, I don't know why we gotta run away. But I like freaking drifted the thing and turned it into a U-turn. And uh, just like floored it. We were like, <laughs> and uh, but it was a really long street. And uh, I looked behind me, and the cop car was gone. And then I looked in front of me, and they came around the other side because uh, their cop car was so much faster. <laughs> and I like I we I just kept like turning around and trying to uh, <laughs> to go down the other way of the street as they kept coming around because uh, I would have cut through the the woods. But there was no path through the woods because the trees were too close together. <laughs> and that's my story of how I ran from the police before we got pulled over. <laughs> because they couldn't get us away. <laughs> I mean, in hindsight, I probably could have, like, skirted past the car because they're not gonna, like, put, put themselves in front of a, a go-kart with a child in it to uh to stop it but the the thought in my head to play chicken didn't didn't even enter so i i i, I probably could have got us away if i would have went like whoop around them but anyway <laughs> the roof was indeed up the second flight of stairs it terminated at a door with a push bar that had a handwritten sign that said something about a smoking area I guess they did use the roof a lot after all. We snuck through and pushed the door closed as quietly as we could. After checking for a handle on the outside, of course. We were both panting. My fingers were numb from the adrenaline as the two of us slumped down against the door to jam it with our bodies. Lex's look was the same as mine. Their eyes wide with terror, but their mouth a broad grin of excitement. Aw, oh, crap. I can't go back to jail, man. Suicide pack, Lex? We'll jump together <laughs> with our newfound love. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'd never kill myself. I just watch you jump and then laugh. Got out of that, Scott Free. We stayed slumped there for a couple of minutes, tense, waiting to hear the Scottish brogue of the security guard through the door as they rooted us out. Then we really would have known where it left to run. Okay, so the security guard was Scottish. Where are we in this world? Is this the furry land equivalent of, like, Europe? I don't know where this game came from. Maybe I should have just gave myself up, but that would be just... Uh, that would be... That's for wimps, man. That's for little bitches that want to go to jail and get raped. Like Tom Dubois. No, we were. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. That's like his biggest fear is being sent to prison and anally raped. So it ain't a joking matter. All right. Every second of every minute of every hour of every day, one million people are anally raped in jail. Every second, one million people are anally raped in prisons. It's not a joking matter. The cool air had a calming effect on my nerves, and after a long enough wait, it seemed safe to get up and look around the roof. Dude, that's like, that's 60 million people getting anally raped every minute. That's crazy. That's freaking craziness right there. Dude, that would mean that would be like 3 billion 600 million uh, no, that's probably very wrong. Would that be 360 <laughs> million? Oh my god, <laughs> my math is terrible right now. I'm not actually thinking of the math problem, though. Every hour is what I was going for, though. I'm gonna go with three billion six hundred million an hour. They're getting anally raped in prison. 
in prisons. 